thousands of years across all cultures, dancing to music has been a ubiquitous form of human expression. What happens when we take this convention and reverse it? Where instead of a person moving and reacting to the music, the music adapts and reacts to their movements. Where natural intuition is at the core foundation of the sound produced. And it's not so much about learning to play the instrument, but rather adapting the instrument to play to you. This is the future of musical interfaces. What you just saw was a demonstration of the prototype software my team and I developed this summer. We were part of a research internship called Summer at the Edge, a STEM outreach program under the Air Force Research Laboratory's Discovery Lab. The program brings together high school and undergraduate students in a technological environment that fosters innovation and collaboration. Our team's mission was to develop a interface that would control sound, a connect musical interface. Working on this project over the past months, I've delved into a technology that is changing the future, human skeletal tracking. I want to talk a little bit about this technology, how we and others use it to create musical interfaces, and the implications of what we do. The Kinect is revolutionary, and it's not just because of its groundbreaking use of machine learning techniques for scene analysis, or because of its size and portability, or even because of its sleek aesthetics. The biggest reason why the Connect is revolutionary is because people actually bought it. After its release in 2010, the Connect became the fastest selling computer hardware device of all time and a pervasive technology in households across America. This, along with a price subsidy, made it more attractive and accessible to researchers and developers like myself and Max. And um, inevitably, the first thing we did once we could plug it into a computer was use it for our own pet projects and research. So since its release, we've seen the development of Microsoft's Connect for Windows, Asus's Exion sensor, and very recently, the startup Soft Kinetic and Leap Motion, releasing hardware and software solutions to this notion of tracking human gestures. With these sensors in the hands of developers, we're seeing a market demand for advancing their technology and applications, including skeletal tracking. So the foundation for this technology is here, and its presence is exploding. But for what, besides just video games and recreation, are people actually using it? The answer is a lot of things. For instance, medical personnel are using it for hands-free, sterile image viewing in the clinic. And researchers are using it in studies such as this one on physical rehabilitation of patients with spinal cord injuries. Then there are people like us using it to create musical interfaces. In fact, a casual search on YouTube uncovers dozens of projects that use the Connect to create sound. Here's one of them, the V-Motion Project. Those are some awesome visuals. This is a really, really cool project. However, did you notice that triggering of notes was mapped to activated regions? The user received haptic feedback on where he or she needed to move their body in order to produce sound. I think that the analytical control we gain from using skeletal tracking demands something more instinctive. Here's another project, Connectar. This time, the motions are more fluid, but they're a bit algorithmic. The user needs to know exactly how the system operates in order to predict and understand the complex sounds it produces. It makes me wonder why we can't have both fluid and instinctive motions be the basis for the sounds produced. 
To answer this, we have to ask ourselves a question, what is intuitive mapping of gestures to sound? It becomes a philosophical exercise. For instance, we can map the pitch of a note to the height of a user's hand. And while this usually makes sense, there may also be times when perhaps a change in hand height corresponds better to a change in volume. Similar problems exist with lateral movement or simultaneous movement between different joints. I think the essence of these problems boils down to the obvious reality that dance does not share one-to-one -one correspondence with the music being played. Different dancers dance differently. But <laughs> I drew these in economics class. <laughs> but um, let's assume for a second that dance and gestures do share one-to-one -one mapping with sound. This requires that we detect all the subtleties in position, angles, accelerations, posture. To be even more accurate, we may want to analyze facial expressions, monitor heart rate and energy expenditures. Not to get carried away, the point is there are so many factors to human motion that manually mapping a person's movements to sound becomes an exercise in futility. Admittedly, this is a really hard problem, and after struggling with it to no avail, I began to wonder, what is our purpose? Looking at these other projects, Vmotion and Kinetar, we went from feeling like innovators to feeling like emulators. We didn't think that we novice developers could match, let alone improve upon the performance they had achieved. But the truth is, working in their midst shouldn't make us feel defeated and small. It should make us feel like we're part of something big. In the spirit of Isaac Newton, I observe that we are standing on the shoulders of giants, who are in turn standing on the shoulders of giants. It is important to realize that technology revolutions are not truly the result of one person's insights, though they may seem, but rather the collective insight and technological drive of many users and innovators together. I remain confident that growing, blossoming technologies in computer vision and machine learning will lay a path in coming years to the musical interface I described, and I plan on being one of the people that leads us there. Anyone who has monitored the development of this technology like I have knows that it is a growing movement. And with this, the notion of a musical interface using skeletal tracking has just expanded beyond anyone's predictions. I think I share with all the users and developers of this technology a vision for a new form of musical interface, a non-physical interface, without buttons or valves or strings, just the human body in pure form that brings new power and beauty to musical performance. It is this collective vision that gives me confidence in its future. I'd like to leave you with a thought, a thought about innovation. This concept where we build off the past and manipulate the present to shape our future. This is inherently a creative and collaborative process. I think the Connect musical interface is a perfect example of this truth. And it makes me excited and eager to see what else emerges where the worlds of creativity and technology collide. Thank you.